done video updates uh, much in a while. So I had this procedure, invasive cervical traction. If you understand much about my history or have been following my videos, you know that despite having all of the measurements that and symptoms to show I have craniocervical instability and despite having been formally diagnosed with it for one surgeon that was uh, an additional test that needed to pass in order to get surgery and in November I failed that which left me stranded out east deteriorating and waiting for treatment of various kinds Anyway, so recently, um, I guess about a week ago, I had that procedure repeated, um, and I passed it. I should be really excited about that, but at this point, um, you know, I'm just exhausted. The procedure itself is hard on me. I'm pretty crashed and um, there's a lot going on but uh, most of all I just don't have this faith anymore this simple faith in a single procedure to cure me even though I know I need this surgery but uh, it brings me back to something which I want to talk about which is um, there are a lot of specific things I need help with but since people are always asking and since some people can't help financially but want to do stuff to help, I think the biggest thing you can do to help in general, whether or not you're an outsider to this community or an insider, is to listen to Eric Johnson. Um, and for those of you who don't know Eric Johnson, um, his name is spelled with a K. Um, and he's the person who is the most famous survivor of the Lake Tahoe CFS outbreak and invented quote-unquote extreme mold avoidance. Um, when I say listen to Eric Johnson, probably some of you are, who already know about him are nodding and saying, yes, I listen to Eric Johnson because I do mold avoidance, but... I'm going to say something that might be controversial, which is that Eric Johnson didn't just tell people to do mold avoidance and teach them how to do it. He wanted people to do that not just to save themselves, but as a means to gather evidence that would bring scientific study to this phenomenon, because he realized that a bunch of people doing this on their own uh, wouldn't be enough to save everybody. A lot of people would fall through the cracks. Some people would be too sick to do this. He realized that we actually do need scientific study of this. And so, for all of the people that do do Eric style mold avoidance, but don't focus on what Eric does, which is to protest, to try and bring attention to this um, from major research institutes, etc., etc. Um, it's great that you're doing Eric style avoidance, and that takes a lot of skill, and it's commendable. But you're missing one part of what Eric has taught. So um, I don't know. Maybe call it something else. Um, and maybe I'm a little bit irritable because. You know, I've done a lot of Eric-style avoidance, and I've hit walls because I've run out of money, and also because I started it too late to fix uh, some permanently damaged from inflammation aspects of my neck. And that's not to say don't do it. I'm an edge case, but I would like people to make it so that I don't know, um, the, so that the people pioneering and experimenting and doing this experimental thing eventually get caught up to by science and get helped in, in ways so that I know how the 
environmental toxins damage my neck and we can prevent that in the future or we can make it so that people don't need surgeries this brutal in the future anyway so uh, yeah again if you're not I don't know why is Eric the only person that goes and protests at the Stanford conferences like if you guys disagree with his approach you should tell him to his face rather than saying like I you know I do Eric style avoidance except for I disagree with everything he stands for in terms of the method of getting attention to this problem. That sounds a bit aggressive, but I mean, it's a valid thing to bring up. Like I've read Eric on avoidance, I've talked to Eric a lot, and if there's one thing I know about Eric, it's that he doesn't just prescribe a method of healing, he prescribes a method of scientific discovery and political pressure to get more actual scientific study of it. I mean, so if what I'm saying is too mean-spirited or too aggressive, just, I mean, think of it as tough love. Um, and if it makes you angry uh, for some reason, then ask yourself why it makes you angry. And I know people have families, they have difficulty doing avoidance themselves. Like, I haven't gone to Stanford to protest for a few reasons. One of them being because the first year of avoidance, I was just focused on thinking I'd maybe heal totally, and I didn't want to go out of my way to some toxic place um, to protest. And also because flying and traveling in most ways was hard on my neck. But... And then by the time it got to me being this sick and having CCI this bad, uh, it's almost impossible for me to go protest. But you know what? If someone comps my plane ticket, gives me meds to help survive it, and 